Welcome, everybody. I'm Kyle Hines, and I'll be hosting the Players Podcast, a GTM family production in partnership with the EuroLeague Players Association. I will be having in-depth conversations with current and former EuroLeague players about important topics that many athletes face on and off the basketball court. Stay tuned for more episodes. What up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Players Podcast. Actually, this is the last episode. So, you know, for the last episode um, of season one, I had to bring a special guest. Um, I mean, really, he doesn't necessarily need an introduction. Um, I mean, he's just a, just a few weeks ago. Um, you seen him in Cologne, Germany, you know, holding up that Euro League championship trophy. Um, to me, um, he's a, right now and currently, I think he's the best player and by sure by 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 far the best american player currently playing in your league um you know somebody i respect and somebody enjoy competing against um my guy shane larkin shane what's up man how's everything it's good bro good to be here uh everything's going well um like you said you know got that year league chip um now just with the national team so uh everything's going well that's good man that's good man now the the, the first question i have to ask you man when when that clock hit zero during that finals game, you know, what was the first feelings that kind of went in your head? Uh, I mean, at first, I mean, obviously I'm so, you're super excited, but it kind of didn't feel real, bro. Yeah. Um, you know, that was my second time in the final four. Uh, you know, the last time I was there, you took a, <laughs> took a cup away from me. <laughs> um, so, um, it didn't feel real, man. It, it was a long journey. It was a long three seasons to lose in that final a few years ago against y'all. Uh, and then last year, you know, to be in first place all season, playing great, everything looking like we were going to have a chance, you know, win that cup last year. Then COVID hit. Uh, then to, you know, finally finish it this season. It, it didn't feel real. It felt like, you know, uh, walking up a long, tall mountain and then you finally get to the top and you take that first breath and you, you kind of just take it all in. And it's like, damn, like. It, it actually is here. And you don't really know how to feel, but you know, you start celebrating with your friends, your family's calling you. Um, and you know, it's one of those moments that you'll never forget. When, when did it feel real? Cause I think you know many people that don't really understand is like, you know, when you, after you win a Euro league, you got to jump right back into your, your, your domestic right. championship. And then even now for you right. season's over and you right back with the Turkish national team. So has it really like really set in yet? Have you got a chance to really sit back and really enjoy um, you know, all that you guys accomplished? I mean, somewhat. Um, I think when everything stops for me, whenever, like, I'm done with the national team, however far we go, um, and I get to sit home back at, with my family and kind of just take in everything, I think that's when I really fully get to feel all the stuff that, that I want to mm -hmm. feel. But, um, you know, it's, it's still, regardless of what you have going on, you know, it's an amazing feeling. You know you have domestic league and, You've been there multiple times now, but you know, after you win your league, the domestic thing is like, all right, we're gonna go out here and fight, but hey, we, yeah. we got that number one trophy. So uh, <laughs> all that other stuff, you know, if we get it, cool. But if not, hey. Um, but luckily, you know, we were in order, uh, was able to pull that one off as well and, and win both of them. So uh, I think when everything kind of slows down and I get to get back home to America and, and chill with my family, friends, and kind of take that first sit, sat on the couch, seated on the couch, mm -hmm. you know, just breathe for a second. I think that's yeah. when it's all gonna kind of hit and I'll be able to, you know, fully feel all of those things that I that I, I wanna feel from winning both of those championships. Definitely, definitely. Now, you you talked about it and you even mentioned a quote before about, you know, like how this was three years into making, you know, this, this championship, this title. You know, did that make it feel sweeter? Was it almost like a sort of, you know, I guess you could say redemption um, you know, because, you know, like you said, we, we, we played in the finals and obviously last year, the COVID year, um, you know, now looking back on it, you know, obviously you had those disappointments, but does it make it sweeter now? Yeah, it definitely makes it sweeter. Um, you know, everybody's career is going to have its ups and its downs, good years, bad years, injuries, all these kind of things. So, um, you know, for us as a, as a group to be together three years, um, and you know, this was my first time ever playing with the team for three consecutive seasons. Yeah. So in the first season to lose in the final, then come back last year, COVID happens and to come back this year, you know, it kind of felt like destiny. Um, you know, I was actually talking to my assistant and I was like, 
you know, I wish there was a camera crew kind of following us around for the last yeah. three seasons because it's really right. like it's an unbelievable story, man, yeah. to go from last place in the league to losing in the championship to be in first place, then COVID, something that nobody could predict, comes and, you know, finishes that season without even having that opportunity to chase that championship again. And then coming back the next year, you know, we had a bunch of injuries. We started the year terrible. We had a losing record halfway through the season. Mm -hmm. um, and then to go on the kind of run we did to end the season. Um, it's, it's an unbelievable story. And, um, you know, I definitely, definitely made it feel much sweeter when we, we finally pulled it off. Uh, going back to when you first signed with FS, you know, coming back from, you know, coming back from Boston, um, did you did you even really think or think or do you have like an in, in inclination that this team would make this type of run? Um, did you feel like were there any like, you know, like was there like a moment where you felt like during that course of that season, like, you know, this team could be special? Because you said they were coming from last place. They were the, the bottom team in Euroleague when you signed there. So was there a moment or anything like that that you felt like, you know, like this team is like a special team? Um. To be honest, that first year um, was very up and down year as well. Um, personally, I was, you know, there were moments during that season where I had buyouts to go back to the NBA and I yeah. was pushing to leave. And, yeah. And, you know, the team didn't let me go and, uh, you know, grateful for that at this moment in time. But um, it was difficult in that first season. I don't think we really saw it until um, there was a matchup with Barcelona, funny mm -hmm. enough, in the middle of the season. Um, and we were four or five in the standings. And it was like one of the last few games of the season or, you know, eight, seven, eight games left or something like that. And uh, we needed to win by, you know, X amount of points in order to have the point total and to go above them in the, in the standings. And um, I think we won that game pretty well. Uh, we won by a lot of points. And I think that's when we started to feel like, OK, now we have a chance to have home court advantage in the playoffs yeah. uh, and really do something here. And, you know, always being able to play on the home court is, is something special in the playoffs. So um, I think that's the moment where. I felt like, you know, we, we have a special thing here and we can actually do something that nobody really expected us uh, to do. Now, going back to the, the end of last season, where obviously you said, like, you know, things ended because of COVID. And for you guys to start this season, um, obviously, I mean, there was a, had to be some type of disappointment. But how hard it was it or how easy was it for you guys to really just jump back in? Um, like you said, I mean, the year last year, you guys dominated. You guys were by far the best team. Um, you, you know, you were the MVP of the season by far. How hard was for you personally to jump back after that disappointment of ending the season? And how hard, how did you guys as a team, you know, kind of galvanize and come back together after having that disappointment? Um, I think, you know, it was very difficult for us at first. Um, and I think it was more so just our mindsets. Um, yeah. I missed the first you know, four, four or five games of the season with an injury. Um, we had some other guys that had missed some time, had, had COVID earlier, um, maybe a few months before the season started. So they were still trying to get their wins back. Um, but it, I think it was difficult because our mindsets were, we were kind of stuck in the past. We were kind yeah. of stuck on who we were. And, you know, I think that's why we started the season where we did. We just kind of expected people to come out and like lay down and be like, oh, yeah. that's the FS team. I was, you know, blowing everybody out and winning every game. And, by far was the best team last year. So I think early on in the season, we were kind of just, we were full of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, you're just as, as I do is any given night, anybody can smack you in the mouth. And if right. you don't respond, yeah. uh, you're probably going to lose the game and lose it by a lot of points. And uh, I think that's really what happened to us early on in the season. And, um, you know, it, at first it felt negative. It felt like, um, you know, we weren't going to be able to, you know, pick it back up. There was a bad energy around the team. You know, coach was getting on us. We were fighting with the coaching. Uh, people were, you know, having injury issues and coach was trying to force us to practice. It was like just that kind of atmosphere around yeah. the team. And then uh, I, we actually won a streak. Um, we lost, I think, four out of five. We got cracked by a lot of people. I think we got cracked by Seska by 20. Mm -hmm. Basconia beat us on our home court by 20. Um so we had a couple of games in a row where we just were in a really bad spot. Um, but then we had a team meeting and we were basically like, what do, what do we want to do? Who are yeah. we? Like, what kind of characters do we have in this locker room? Like, do we want to let, you know, two seasons ago, going from last place to the championship game, you know, that's a feel good story. Mm -hmm. And last year being in first place, you know, that obviously felt good as well. Is that what we want to be remembered as? And is that the best that we can truly be? Or do we want to, you know, 
look this adversity in the face and kind of fight and, and show, show our true colors. And so what kind of personalities and characters we have on this team. And we all went through the, through the whole room, coaching staff as well, and spoke and spoke our mind on how we felt about certain things. And um, I think once we left that meeting, we all kind of you know, agreed that we deserved it. We, we, as a unit, we deserved, it. we, what's the word here, man? We, we owed it to each other mm -hmm. to give it a, that chance to yeah. fight, to be the best, to be the, the top of our potential. And I think, you know, once we kind of walked out of that room, we kind of put the foot back on the on the gas. And um, obviously it turned out the way it did. But uh, definitely a lot of adversity and struggles this season with, you know, everything involved. Yeah, man, I, I low key believe that through the year league season, the team that usually wins the year league is a team that kind of goes through and struggles through adversity. Like through like the history, probably like the last like 10 years, it's usually the team that like the team that usually like is the top and usually it's kind of like skates through, never wins the, right. the final four. But it's usually like the, the team that has some issues or has some injuries or have whatever. That's the team that usually wins for whatever reason. But like you said before, I think it's like that the team meetings and that stuff. You, you guys kind of find something that kind of kind of brings you together. Does, did you have any like personal doubts? Because like, I mean, you were you were going through injuries, but then there was times where, like I said, you were, you know, you went from having like, you know, an MVP season to like, you know, struggling with injuries. And then I'm sure you had all these outside people, you know, NBA teams or other outside people, you know, always kind of like, I guess you can say in your ear, kind of talking to you. Did you always, did you ever have any kind of like personal doubts about the situation? Looking back on it. Um, yeah. I mean, I definitely had doubts early on in the season. Um, you know, I had double knee surgery. That was my first time ever having any kind of surgeries on my knees. Um, so even having that, you know, there was a question of, um, will I be able to come back the same way? Um, mm -hmm. I'd be the same player, will I have the same bounce, the same athleticism. Um, and, you know, my recovery time was much longer than expected. Mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely had doubts. And then when I felt well enough to get on the court, I came and I played one game uh, against Olympiacos in, in Athens. And then we came back to Istanbul and I tested positive for Corona yeah. the day after that. <laughs> it was like, I was really like, dog, like, Can't what wait. is going on? <laughs> What is going on? And yeah, I mean, I had a lot of personal doubts. Um, and then, like you said, everybody in your ear, especially, you know, coming into this season based on what I did last year. Yeah. And, you know, coming off an injury, coming off of COVID, coming back and, you know, not being that guy who everybody saw last year. Everybody mm -hmm. was like, what's wrong with him? Why isn't he being, why isn't he the same guy scoring 25 points a night and doing all these record breaking things? And, you know, it gets in your head and you, you sometimes doubt it a little bit, but, um, you know, I faced a lot of adversity in my career and I've been doubted a lot. So uh, I kind of use that as my motivation to kind of, you know, put my foot back on the pedal, uh, on the gas and try to get back to, you know, just playing winning basketball. It's never, mm -hmm. I've never been a guy that sits here and is like, all right, it's all about me. I got to get my stats tonight. I have to have 20 because that's who I am. I'm a guy who scores 20 points a game. Yeah. I don't want to be known as that. I want to be known as a winner. And that's always what I will say and always what I, you know, truthfully mean that I could go out there and have zero points and we win the game at the end of the day, that's all that truly matters to me. And, um, you know, those doubts early on in the season definitely helped, you know, myself, you know, fight those personal battles in my mind and, and question myself and see who I am, who I mm -hmm. truly am. At the end of the day, can I be this guy who can live off of, you know, all those records and those things that I've done over the last two years, or can I, you know, face the surgery, face COVID and, and kind of, you know, fight back and, and become that guy that helps win games again. And, um, you know, I think as a team and individually, I think we we, we fought those battles and uh, really made us battle tested. And then towards the end of the year uh, in the playoffs and in the final four, when you, like you said, like when you need to have those moments to see who you really are, you know, you can look to your right and look to your left. And you know that these guys are go to battle and uh, you want to join them and be a part of that as well. So I think, you know, those personal doubts definitely helped individually in our team this year. What would you say that the key to the success of your team is if you can kind of pinpoint, you know, one or two things? Um, Cause I mean, when, when I you guys, when you guys get it going, man, you guys is, you guys yeah. are dangerous, bro. Like when you guys get it going, yeah. you guys are capable of putting up 35, 40 point quarters. And I mean, to me as a fan, like when you guys get it going, like I love watching you guys play um, as a competitor. I hate it, but you know, as a, you know, as a, as a fan, I love watching how you guys play. Um, I would say it, 
you know, it's just our, our chemistry at this point. Mm -hmm. um, first year, we all got here, nine new players. We all got here and worked in training camp. And, you know, it took us a while that first season to figure out who we were. But I think the biggest thing for us uh, is our unselfishness. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily me every single night. Uh, you know, Vasa gets a lot of credit. I get a lot of credit. But people don't understand how good Slav Simone is. Like, yeah. they don't understand he makes us go as well. People don't understand how good, you know, Roddy is. Yeah. People don't understand how good T-Boy is. Brian, yeah. Chris, Adrian, like, it's not just, you know, the, the two guys that get most of the attention, me and Vasa. It's it's literally everybody on our team. And there's been multiple moments where, you know, I haven't had it going or Vasa hasn't had it going and Roddy will go out there and have a 15 point quarter. Yeah. Or Bruno will go out there and have eight points and eight assists in a quarter. Yeah. And people don't really understand that or recognize that, but um, we're so unselfish as a unit that it's like, I know I don't have it going right now. So Vasa, you try to take over the game. If Vasa doesn't have it going, all right, now Kruno kind of take over the game. And then, you know, when we all have it going, we put up those 40 point quarters and we look like we're unstoppable. So yeah. I think the unselfishness that, that we have individually and, you know, that chemistry that we've built over the last two, two, three years is what really helped us, you know, become that, that team that we are. I mean, that's something too that I respect about you the most too. It's like, you're kind of like a, I look at you as like an unselfish superstar. Like you have every right. If you want to, you can put up every shot or do whatever you want. But like the way I look at it is like, you pick your spots and you know, like, yo, today I don't got it going. Then I'm a, you know, I'm a create for somebody else. But when you do got it going, then that's when you're more aggressive. And I think that's like, I mean, I love that about you. I love that. You know, like I said, like, like I said, you're somebody I respect a lot. And I love that. And you know, the seeing you do that. Cause like I said, you can, you can put up, 25 shots a game and nobody can ever say anything to you. So, man, I think that's, I think that's great. Appreciate it, bro. Now, um, what was the celebration like in, in Turkey? You know, once you guys got back, um, you know, Ephesus is, I guess you can say, I mean, they are the most successful basketball club, you know, in Turkey, but you know, at the same time, you guys don't have a soccer football team. So you don't have like right. that, you know, the Fenerbahce, the Besiktas, that Galatasaray kind of like, you know, fan spirit. But what has been like the reaction, like, you know, since you guys gotten back to Turkey and the celebration and all that different type of stuff? Um, I mean, it's been good. We've had, you know, a couple of team parties and obviously COVID makes it a little more difficult as well. Yeah. Um, but we've had closed restaurants and stuff where we've all been able to bring family and friends together and, um, kind of, you know, celebrate the moments. Um, and around the city, you know, we've gotten a lot of love. We've, you know, been to the, the Capitol and, you know, we met the president and we've done a lot of things and people are really showing that respect. So uh, it's been good uh, to bring the trophy back here. A lot of people on the low are saying that they're just changing from Fenner fans to being Epic fans, <laughs> at least basketball wise. <laughs> so, you know, that, that always feels good when you can, you know, change somebody's heart in that respect. But um, it's been good. Um, and, you know, there's so many positives to it. The negative is, you know, during COVID, you don't have that yeah. huge celebration that you want to have driving through the city on a bus or whatever. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, you know, you know, personally, you don't, you know, you can't ever take any of these EuroLeague trophies for granted. Um, it's so difficult to get them. Uh, and, and I think it's personally one of the most difficult championships to win because literally tournament format, it's not a best of seven series or a best yeah. of five. It's the one game and if you have that bad game that day it's over it's, it's over no, for you. <laughs> yeah. it's over. Like, yeah. you can't come back by the next day so um it's definitely been you know a great reception back here at home now coach altamont i mean he's won everything um you know at this point in his career um but you know at the same time i guess you could say he's a little controversial and a little i guess you can say kind of underrated um but you know what about his style that has allowed you personally to have success um, and what, what about him? You know, what is it like playing for him? Um, well, I think the thing that he does, the best part of, of his coaching style is that he allows players to play to their potential. Yeah. Um, and in a lot of ways that can be positive for players and a lot of ways it could be negative because mm -hmm. some guy come out here and think they are more than who they are. And, you know, they play bad and it, you know, they end up, you know, either off the team or on the bench, not getting minutes. But if you take advantage of that kind of situation and you play well, then he kind of just gives you more and more freedom and he gives you more and more space. He gives you a longer leash per se mm -hmm. to go out there and make those mistakes because he knows at the end of the day, you're going to make more positive plays than negative plays. And I think that's what, um, you know, it has been the best thing about playing for him is you can see, you know, 
many guys that are here right now have had career years. I've had the best years of my career. Boss has had the best years of his career. Kronos had the best years of his career. Mm -hmm. Adrian had all your league type of season. His first year here, you know, Chris has had great moments here. Bryant, um, you know, Sarah Tosh this year kind of exploded. Yeah. And now, you know, he yeah. has a lot of options now. So um, that's that's what I would say is, is the most um, impactful part of the way he coaches. He gives you that freedom to go out there and be yourself. At the same time, he's, he's strict and... If you take those shots, take those shots with confidence. But if you're not going to make them, then understand that you're going to be on the bench and don't get upset with me because I gave you that space to yeah. do it. Um, so I think that's probably the the biggest part of why, you know, I've grown to, to be the guy that I am, just having that potential, having that space to be who I am and kind of find myself within the system and, and just grow to, to where I am now. Speak a little bit about Vasa. I mean, you talked about him, but, you know, I think – people don't really see his trajectory in his career. You know, like he wasn't like a, I guess you can say like a, a blue chip, you know, guaranteed can't miss prospect. I mean, right. he seemed like he's grind his way up to get to the point now where, you know, he's the, the MVP and, you know, all the accolades that he has had, um, you know, so talk a little bit about him and then, you know, where do you guys see yourself as, you know, backcourts and kind of like the history of your league? Cause I mean, to me, I think you guys are definitely up there, um, you know, top 10 for sure, in my opinion. So where do you, what do you guys, you know, do you guys ever talk about that at all? Um, I mean, yeah, we've talked about our histories uh, a lot. I know a lot about his career um, from, you know, he was a skier. <laughs> like, I was a <laughs> I grew up a skier. Um, and that's what he, he thought he was going to do. Then he got into basketball and, you know, he was just so naturally talented at it. Yeah. Um, that he started playing basketball. Then, he, you know, he grew. He started getting better. Um, but he's been through a lot. Uh, he's had a lot of injuries um, mm -hmm. in his career. So. You know, he had a lot of, you know, potential when he was young, but it got derailed by ACL injuries and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, he's been through the grind. Uh, he's played in, you know, Bayern. He played in Tofash in Turkey. He's played in Zagiris. He's played in, in Serbia. He's played in a lot of places where, um, like you say, he wasn't like the Luka Doncic where yeah, 17 exactly. years old, you're the team and, you know, you go. go and, you know, he's had to, you know, grind it out. And I think that's what makes him – so special because a guy that you know wasn't supposed to be all that, that grinds and goes through the ups and downs the adversities and fights his way through and eventually finds himself at the top um which that's where he is now year league champ year league mvp year league final four mvp you find yourself at the top of the league so i think you know his motivation his dedication to the game of basketball um is truly what has made him such a great player and it's it's enjoyable to see you know, him, you know, when I first got to FS, I didn't really know much about him. He had come mm -hmm. off a of Final Four with the Zachary's, but he wasn't the guy there. It was Pangos that year and yeah. Davies. So him to kind of come here and take on that responsibility and kind of become that guy over the last few seasons, you see him grow every single year. You see his confidence grow. You see his, you know, awareness grow. You see his, like, you see him walking different. And, you know, mm -hmm. it feels good to be a part of that journey to see a guy who's been through so much uh, now, you know, grind so hard to be at the top level of the year league. And, um, and as far as, you know, us as, as a backcourt, I would love to say we're top five, top 10 or whatever, uh -huh. but I don't know enough about the backcourts to, mm -hmm. to kind of sit here and, and compare us to the guys in the past. I know, you know, I know the guys who've done it, but I don't know who exactly was yeah. backcourt pairings. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say last year I would have been the MVP this year. He was the MVP. Um, you know, we've been in final fours. We have a yearly championship now, uh, record breaking numbers across the board. So I think we're definitely up there, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't have enough knowledge uh, yeah. <laughs> of history to sit here and, you know, place myself somewhere, you know, blindly. So uh, I mean, just to be in the conversation, I mean, I think is, is, yeah, is, is, sure. is enough. So where, where, where do you see the future of this team? Obviously with, you know, free agency and the market and stuff, like we don't know what the future is going to hold, but if you guys are able to keep the core together, you know, what do you see the future of your team? And, you know, what do you feel like this, you know, how much more do you feel like this group can accomplish? Um, well, I mean, we've all, you know, hung out since we won the last, since we won the cup a couple of weeks ago. And um, I think only one team has ever been back to back. Yeah. Um, two, 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 two. Olympiacos okay. and Maccabi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so two teams have gone back to back. Um, 
And I think, you know, we have that that potential here. If we can keep the core together, if everybody comes back, um, I think we have that opportunity. Uh, we're, you know, we're getting older, but we're still, you know, all in our, you know, primes where we know each other and the chemistry is there now, where it's not like a well-oiled machine that, you know, we know how to operate and how to play together. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, everybody's going to have their decisions. Vasa has decisions, Sertac, Kruno, uh, Adrian just resigned. Uh, James just resigned. So, you know, we brought some guys back, but uh, there's obviously going to be some some decisions that people have to make here in the future. Um, but I think if we could bring everybody back and, and kind of stay together, uh, I think we'll make another run at it. And, you know, we'll see if 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 we can do it. But um, like I said, I just don't know what the exact future of the team yeah. is going to look like in, in three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit more about your, your personal journey. Um, start off, I want to start off with, we had the last episode, we had Alex Sabrinas. Um, we talked a lot about, you know, mental health and about athletes kind of speaking about, you know, things that they're going through off the court. Um, so I want to talk about, you know, you were diagnosed with OCD and, you know, you decided to actually, you know, speak out about it. What made you want to speak out about it? Um, obviously it's kind of a stigma around athletes that, you know, you know, I guess you could say we're invincible and, you know, we don't go through, you know, those issues and go through those different problems. So why did you decide to speak out about it? Um, I think I just was, you know, at that point in my career, I had just, I felt comfortable enough with it and who I was as a guy, as a player, to, you know, speak on it. And, you know, I, I had those same doubts early on in my career where it was like, if it, you know, if it gets out to the media, you know, you never know what a story like that, what it's going to turn into, where it's right. going to run and yeah. have a bad game. We're going to blame it on that. And, you know, all the stuff that can come from it. Um, so I, I, early on in my career, I didn't want to speak on, I tried to keep it as quiet as possible, but actually I saw a few people started speaking out about it uh, across different sports, uh, mm-hmm. some football players talking about American football players and Kevin Love said something. Mm-hmm. Then DeMar DeRozan spoke about his depression. And I was like, you know, if these guys who are at the top of the league, you know, speak about this and deal with whatever that they're going to have to deal with, then I should be able to tell my story because, you know, there's only a few Kevin Loves. There are only yeah. a few DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys like me who are, you know, Absolutely. rotation guys in the NBA that are just, you know, not the superstars. So um, I just wanted to get my story out there and, you know, kind of speak on, you know, what my journey was, how, what I've been, what I've been through and, you know, how I've grinded through the situations that I've been on to get to the level where I am and just try to give some inspiration to the, you know, 5'11 kid in wherever in the world yeah. that, you know, <laughs> me and says, how did he get there? Well, yeah. this, is it. this is what I've been through. This is what I dealt with, how I, you know, dealt with my adversities and kind of got to this moment. So I think that's, you know, a culmination of all those things is what made me feel comfortable enough to, you know, just go out there and speak my truth. What type of feedback have you gotten from, you know, fans or from other players? Like once you came out, cause I'm sure that there's, there's more people or a lot more people than you thought that are actually going through this and, you know, probably even, you know, thanks you or appreciates you for actually talking and speaking about, about it. Definitely. Um, it was actually amazing, man. That day that that article came out, I think my phone blew up more than it ever did in my mm-hmm. life um, because, you know, people were just reaching out to me and, you know, more than anything, it was questions. It was just like, they would call me and be like, yo, bro. So when I lose a game, I go home and like, I can't sleep until I do this. Like, do you yeah. think I have OCD? Yeah. And I would like try to talk to them and just understand more about what it is or how they're going through it. And you, it, it, was actually amazing to see like the amount of of feedback that I got from it from the different from all stars in the NBA to superstars in the NBA to guys in Europe, you know, to people that I went to high school with, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was like a large, you know, variety of people that were contacting me and it, it made me feel even better about my decision because you never know, you know, a lot of the times when you have mental health issues yeah. or mental health problems or whatever you want to call it, you know, you feel alone. Like a lot of times you feel alone. You feel like you're the only one that's going, through, going through it. what you're yeah. going through. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you feel like nobody's going to understand, like nobody's going to understand why I need to do this or why I feel this way. So for me to be able to speak about it, speak my truth and to see the feedback of, you know, the hundreds and thousands of people that are going through the same kind of thing, it kind of makes you feel good about, you know, where you are and how you've dealt with whatever you've dealt with, because you're helping these people understand more about what they're going through and, you know, mm-hmm. possibly open their eyes or give them the confidence to go seek help or, you know, whatever the, the case is that it may be. So it was definitely a, 
a great amount of feedback and um, I was extremely happy with my decision to you know, come out and, and speak my truth about my OCD. That's great, man. That's great. Now I want to ask about the, the EuroLeague championship. We talked about it from the team aspect, but I want to ask you about it from a personal aspect. Um, obviously you, we talked about it, you know, you said that, you know, you went through the reverse in your career, you know, kind of being like the journeyman in the NBA and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, you never really got the opportunity that you, you know, that you really, you know, truly deserved. And then, like you said, you know, kind of overseas, you know, you never played for more than one team, you know, for, you know, more than one year. So do you feel that this EuroLeague title kind of gave you a sense of validation, you know, to, you know, to all the things and all the moments that you kind of been through the, through your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, being a journeyman is never easy. You have new coaches, new teammates, and you never really feel a part of anything. Um, so it's hard to like, you know, kind of be yourself in these in these situations. Um, but luckily enough, you know, I've been here for a few years now, and um, it definitely gives me that. It gave me that feeling of validation. It gives me that stamp that you can never take away from me. Now, yeah. whatever you say, I'm a I'm a winner. I'm, I'm definitely a winner, and you know, I've played well in Europe the last few years, but you know, I haven't won anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, now to sit here as a year league champion, to be, you know, one of the main players on that kind of team, uh, definitely give me that stamp of approval or that stamp of validation that, you know, not not many people have it. You know, not many people have Absolutely. that year league championship. It's yeah. very like, it's very difficult to get that. And, um, you know, you have a couple of yourself. So you know how, you know, you're viewed once you become that kind of guy. When you yeah. win a year league championship, it's like now, you're viewed as a winner. You're viewed as a guy that knows how to win. You view you have the experience now. You know what it takes to you know get to this level and how to compete at the highest of levels and be on these teams. Um, so I definitely feel like it's given me that that stamp of approval or that validation that you know I'm one of the best players that has been in this league and um, one of the best players currently that can help you know my team or a different team or whatever the case is around the league that views me as a winner now. And uh, I think that's the greatest feeling that you have. Uh, you, you're also viewed as, you know, one of the top Americans or need not the top American currently playing outside of the NBA. What does that mean to you to kind of have that 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 title? And do you always do you ever feel like, you know, you have any like added extra pressure, you know, against yourself? Because, you know, like you said, I mean, you how you are, you know, the top guy, you know, one of the top guys, especially, you know, like I said, as an American. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I wouldn't necessarily call it a sense of, of pressure. I would just. Mm -hmm you know, call it, you know, I feel like I get everybody's best shot. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. you know, that people see, you know, everybody has social media now. Everybody has, you know, Twitter, Instagram, everybody sees the reports, hears the things. And now it's like, they come out with the reports. Oh, Shane Lark is the number one player in Europe or the number yeah. two player in Europe. So I feel like whenever I go to, you know, y'all, we go play Milan yeah. and, you know, you got Malcolm there. Malcolm, okay, that's not one yeah. guy. I'm going right at him. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin's like, yeah. okay, I'm going right at him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the kind of energy that I get every single night. And as a competitor, you got to love it because, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you go out there, you play against some of the best players in the world. And at the end of the day, it's a competition. You go out there, you talk, whatever that, that, that happens. And after the game, it's all respect because at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's a competition. Again, man versus man, whoever wins comes out on top and that is what it is. But uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a pressure. I would say that, you know, I, I feel like every single time I go play now, you know, I get everybody's best shot. And, uh, you know, obviously as a competitor, I want to stay on top of that list as well. So yeah. I'm going to give you my best as well. So uh, it's, it's cool. And I, I like the title and I like, you know, having that kind of pressure, if that's what you want to call it. Um, but it definitely is a, is a good feeling and um, something that is definitely a goal of mine as long as I'm here to, to re retain that title as the best guy outside of the NBA, your uh, best American outside the NBA. Now you, you call Turkey and Istanbul, especially your home. Now us, you know, coming up, you know, as American players, it was all about one thing. It was NBA. That was it. It was kind of like, you know, a lot of us didn't even necessarily know about overseas basketball. Did you ever think growing up that Istanbul, Turkey would be the place that, you know, that you would <laughs> call home and that you would spend, you know, majority of your time? Like, and I see you, like, I see you on Instagram and obviously we follow each other and we talk to each other, but I see you a lot of times. You're, you're there during the summertime. You're there, you know, making, you know, making trips. And, you know, I mean, people seeing your, your house and, uh, you know, on the, the yearly thing, it don't look like you, you moving or leaving anytime soon. So, you know, right. so, you know, talk about that, man. Cause like, I, I, for me, 
you know, uh, us coming up, we always heard about the negative parts about playing overseas. Right. You know, yep. we always hear right. about the bad stories or the horror stories. We never really heard about like you can go over there and make a, you know, a hell of a career for yourself. And and like you said, make a home for yourself over there. So talk about that. Like. Um, well, yeah, I mean, when I first signed here in Turkey, uh, I was actually on vacation with my my family. And um, I told them I have this offer from Istanbul to uh, Turkey, and I think that I was going to accept it. And they all looked at me and were like, where is that? I was like, to be honest, I don't even know. <laughs> so, like, you know, to be sitting here years later and, you know, feel like this is a home to me. Like, I know so much about the country. I know I have my spots. I have my people. I have my things that I do, you know. To last summer when, you know, COVID was going on, I came back to Turkey. And I was yeah. just here in Turkey chilling. So, you know, uh, it's it's unbelievable because, like you said, growing up, you think of one thing and one thing only you think NBA and if NBA don't work out, it's like, I guess I'll go somewhere and try to figure it out. But you mm -hmm. never expect, um, I, I never would have expected to, you know, find a home here in Turkey where, you know, I'm extremely comfortable. Um, but like you said, man, you can, I think, and I think with social media now and, you know, players like yourself, myself, Mike, mm -hmm. Malcolm, like these guys that have had the success over here now, I think, you know, people are starting to open their eyes to it more and more, but yeah. I think it still is like very underrated kind of lifestyle I that agree. you can live. I agree. Because, you know, I've been in the NBA, I've been in Europe. To be honest with you, there's 18 EuroLeague teams. By the majority, the cities in Europe are 10 times better than the cities that are even in the States. Like, mm -hmm. And I'm not talking bad about no NBA team or no NBA <laughs> team, but you yeah. got like Cleveland. Yeah, Utah, yeah. Milwaukee, Detroit, yeah. like San Antonio, like they're not bad cities, but you come over here and you look at the places that you're playing over here. It's like Istanbul, huge city, yeah. Milan, Barcelona, Madrid, Moscow, you know, yeah. like there's like elite cities around the country that are around the world that, you know, are, are great experiences above anything else. And, you know, if you can really find it in yourself to have that you know, be able to live uncomfortably for a little bit and really dive into the culture, really dive into what this can turn into for you. I mean, I think, you know, there's guys that, there's guys like me, there's guys like you that have, you know, probably stuck around in the NBA or the D G mm -hmm. League or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it and like have just fought for that one chance, fought for that one chance, fought for that one chance. And now you're, you know, 13, 14 years in, you played two seasons in the NBA on a minimum, 13 seasons in the G League. And it's like, you don't really have a, a future set up for yourself. Exactly. Whereas you come over here and not everybody's going to have that level of success that you've had. Um, but, you know, you can come over here with a better opportunity to exactly. grow and build yourself up, build your brand, become one of the best Americans ever with the most championships and mm -hmm. have that respect that, you know, you're looked at in a different way that you would be looked at if you tried to hang on over there and, you know, kind of just try to keep banging on this door that's not going to open for you. Um, so, you know, I, you know, it's been life changing for me. Um, I, I never would have expected it, bro, but, um, definitely I'm so happy with the decision that I've made to, to you know, be here and, and really, you know, be un like when I made that decision to come here, I was so uncomfortable. I had mm -hmm. no idea what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you have to come into it with an open mind. And now I'm sitting here three years later a Turkish citizen playing for the Turkish national team. <laughs> you know, like I've been home for the last three seasons. So uh, it's been amazing, man. I, I want to, I want to read this, this quote that you, that your mom said. And I, I thought this was, this is fascinating because obviously your dad is who he is. Your dad's a hall of fame baseball player. And I'm sure your mom has seen, you know, fans and seen it from all over the world, but she was like, I've never seen anything like it. The kids, you know, chase him. And she's talking about you in Turkey the kids are chasing his car into traffic. You know, I never would have said anything like these kids when they meet Shane and like the reaction they get. Like, you know, she said, I thought I would have seen everything, you know, with your dad, but she seeing that reaction. So being who your dad is and being who your family is, I want to know the first time that, especially your dad, especially your mom, the first time they seen the reaction that you got from being overseas, you know, what, what, what were their thoughts? And even now, like, I mean, you're, you're the, you know, one of the top athletes, top Turkish athletes 
And I mean, you can't go anywhere. You can't go to restaurants. You can't do do right. do anything for the most part. But, you know, right. what was the reaction of your family and your friends back home, you know, when they seen, you know, seeing the reaction that you get, you know, from the fans and people in Turkey and the lifestyle you live in Turkey? Yeah. Um, I mean, they were, you know, pretty much blown away. Like, like she said it in that quote, we were leaving. Um, we come out here for Christmas the last few seasons. Um, and, you know, those are always some, some great games during those times in the Euro yeah. League. Um, and I don't know exactly who we're playing, but we got a big win at home against a good team. And, um, you know, after the games, there's always, you know, a bunch of people waiting for us um, near the arena. But then also the people that aren't, you know, we sell out pretty much all the time yeah. here now. So the people that can't come to the games, you know, they'll stay in the outside of the gates. And then when you drive out, you know, they'll run at the car and bang on the windows and kind of try to get pictures or whatever the case may be. And um, when they saw it, they were like, is that like, do you deal with that every single game? I am like, I mean, for the most part, and they're like, yeah, that's actually amazing. And my dad's yeah. in the car and he's just kind of sitting there like with a smile on his face. And you know, it's a good feeling uh, to, you know, he's a Hall of Fame baseball player, you know, one of the best players ever to do what yeah. he did. Uh, so for him, you know, all the way across the world in a place where, they didn't even know existed up until three years ago, probably, um, you know, for them to have, to see that reaction um, that I receive out here since I became a player here and to see that, that passion that these fans have mm -hmm. for basketball here in Europe. Um, I think it really opened their eyes to, um, you know, the level of appreciation, the level of support that basketball has globally. Mm -hmm. And um, definitely was a great feeling to, to see that, um, that moment happened and to see their faces, my mom had tears in her eye. <laughs> so it was definitely, <laughs> definitely a good moment, man. Now being named in, in a Turkish citizen and being part of the, the Turkish national team, you know, what did that mean to you? And when you found out that news, like, you know, what type of feeling reaction did you, did you have? Cause I mean, like you said, that's, I mean, it has to be special. I don't know, you know, too many people, you know, too many Americans, especially in Turkey, that they allow, you know, to, you know, have citizenship and, you know, be a part of the national team. So when you put on that that Turkish jersey, you know, what does that mean to you? Um, it feels amazing. Um, you know, I, I found this place three years ago. Um, and the way that the people here opened up their arms to me, it made me feel at home. Um, the way they supported me through the ups and downs, you know, I felt like I, I, I owed them something. And there's mm -hmm. like the, there's nothing. And I always say this: there's nothing that I can do uh, to pay this country back for what it's done for me, for my career, for my future. Um, and, you know, I, oh, I felt like it was only right. You mm -hmm. know, when I had that opportunity to join the team, I felt like there's no way that I could say no to that because they've done, this country's done so much for me that, you know, at least I could do is, you know, wear this jersey with pride and go out here and fight and, and be the guy that I am and play my hardest in order to, uh, you know, represent them in the right way. Um, so, you know, it feels amazing, man. And like I said, you know, I've never been able to play for the USA team growing up in high school or anything mm -hmm. like that. So in order to, you know, be able to represent a country, it's a whole different like feeling out there playing and you know, I'm out there playing with other Turkish guys as well that grew up here that have that homegrown pride. Yeah. And um, like in the competition, it's like, it's like a war, bro. <laughs> like yeah. you're literally out there playing <laughs> country versus country, dog. Yeah. It's like, you know, the team is like, we played Croatia in one of these windows or uh, the Netherlands and Sweden in these windows. And, you know, they have some players that I had never heard. I never mm -hmm. heard of them. And there's no disrespect to them, but it's not yearly guys yeah. for whatever reason. And I'm like, you know, I'm a yearly guy. I'm like, man, this is, you know, I'm gonna go out here. I'm a cook, man. You get in these things, bro. The level of intensity, the the way they deny, the way they help, the way they fight, bro. It's a different level, dog. It's, it's, it's like, pride. It's it all about pride mind. at that moment. I was like, I can have, yeah, it's literally pride. You got your country across his chest, and mm -hmm. you're fighting for that country right now. You're not just playing for FS or Milan or yeah. you know, whatever your club team is that pay. You paying, you here to play for free. You paying, you playing because you want to represent the, the name across your chest. And man, that was an eye opening experience. And, you know, it was extremely fun, extremely, you know, intense. And I was very grateful to feel that, that level of intensity and um, to be able to, you know, wear Turkey across my chest and represent them in those games just gave me an, an insane amount of pride. And um, 
really happy and, and grateful that, you know, they've allowed me to, you know, become one of their own mm-hmm. and um, just, you know, try to represent them in the best way that I can. All right. The last question I have for you before I let you get out of here, um, like you talked about it before, you know, you one of your motivations that you're playing for and you speak out for or for other kids or other players that want to be the 5'11 kid that, you know, like that you were coming, growing up, coming up. You know, what advice or what tips would you have, you know, for somebody you know, that wants to have a successful career in basketball overseas um, that's currently watching this? One of the youths, you know, that's currently watching this. What would your tips be for in order to have success? Um, you know, I would say that the number one thing is, is like you have to you have to commit. You have to mm-hmm. commit to it. You can't. You can't say it. You can't say, yeah, I want to go play basketball overseas. You can't just say that. Everybody mm-hmm. gets just, I mean, I can't go to the NBA, so I'll just go overseas. No, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> so many guys come over who don't work, who don't yeah. put that work in, who don't grind, who don't give it every single thing they have because you can be out of Europe like this. And yeah. a lot of guys don't get that second opportunity. So, you know, for any kids or for any people that are watching this that, that truly want to do it, like you genuinely in your heart want to become a professional basketball player, wherever, Europe, NBA, China, Australia, like you really have to commit yourself to this game and give the game everything that it deserves in order for it to give it back. And, you know, I think that's the number one thing is you have to commit to it too. You have to believe, you have to believe. And if you don't believe, you're not going to really commit to it the way you should. So I think you have to believe in yourself and, you know, there's going to be doubters all the time, 5'11 kid, mm-hmm. undersized center. Like mm-hmm. you, you know, people are gonna tell you you can't. They're yeah. gonna tell you you can't. You're not good enough. You might have to start off in, you know, the second division of, I don't know where, mm-hmm. Romania. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if you believe and you commit and you grind and you work, you're, you're gonna find some type of success and everybody's level of success is different. But, you know, you'll find some success if you really commit to it and, and really grind and, really believe in yourself and what you're able to do. Um, so I would say those two things are probably the most important, just to really commit to it, work, outwork everybody, um, and, and just believe in yourself. And if you do those th- things at the high level and, you know, truly, truly, truly in your heart want to make it work, I think that there's a certain level of success that you can reach over here and create some type of future for yourself um, and really enjoy the lifestyle of becoming or being a, a professional player, whether that's, you know, NBA, Europe, wherever. Mm-hmm. So, um, that would be my, my biggest advice is right there is, is those few things. Man. Well, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you taking the time, you know, like obviously you said, you know, you're busy with the national team and different things like that, but I appreciate you taking a moment, man. I wish you best of luck with the national team, you know, great success, great health. Um, hope you, you know, have a healthy return back to your family. Um, and for sure, man, we'll definitely link up and catch up very soon, man. So I appreciate you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you.